Hey guys, welcome back to another skill caps video. Today, we're gonna be going over the top 7 plays you can be making in Arena right now to win games. And no, this isn't gonna be another Red Paladin crit montage. Instead, we're gonna look at some hidden win conditions many players don't know about. Starting off at number 7 is Dispelling Divine Favor to Interrupt. This combo is available to any team that has an offensive dispel and an interrupt. When Divine Favor is used by Paladins, they become immune to all interrupts and their next heal gets a massive boost. If you're fast enough, you can dispel the Divine Favor effect to remove the interrupt immunity and then immediately use your kick. This play is really powerful if you manage to pull it off, because most Paladins won't even notice their Divine Favor is gone, so they will almost always take a full interrupt. Here we have a mage in a 1v2 situation against Holy Paladin Affliction Warlock. With interrupt out of the way from the warlock and combustion available, there is a kill opportunity on the enemy paladin. With the paladin locked down, the mage uses combustion. Without a full fear available, there isn't much the enemy team can do to stop the damage. Without the warlock to soak the meteor damage, the enemy paladin is dropped dangerously low and the damage is enough to force divine protection and save by the light. The warlock frantically uses mortal coil to try and peel and the paladin is now behind a pillar with divine favor active. Remember that this buff will make the Paladin immune to interrupts and will give them an empowered heal. The Paladin starts casting a flash of light. If this goes off, the kill will be over. But with an incredibly fast mechanical play, the mage is able to spell steal the divine favor and instantly counterspell the Paladin just a few milliseconds before the cast finishes. This high skilled play was game changing and now puts the mage in a good 1v2 situation against the enemy warlock. Although it was made shown in this clip, this very same combo is available to warlocks with their fell hunter to spell and spell lock. In any case, timing your dispel with an interrupt is a really great way to catch enemy paladins off guard and open up a new kill window. If you saw our video on how to use BM Trinket, you already know how overpowered Gladiator's Emblem can be. If you need a refresher, BM Trinket instantly boosts the player's total HP when used, but when the effect ends, the bonus HP gets removed. This causes the player to instantly drop in health. If you line up your burst when this happens, you can instantly kill enemy players. Once again, this came into play in a recent AWC tournament, where Mauro of Skillcapped EU was able to time his damage at the end of a BM Trinket. When Gladiator's Emblem falls, the target's HP quickly drops, and this sudden drop in HP was a perfect time to pop Combustion and score a really intelligent kill. Here, we can see that Marrow has Combustion available and the Red Paladin is around 75%. If you pay close attention to the Paladin's buffs, you can see that their BM Trinket is about to fade. The moment it does, you can see that the Paladin's HP dramatically dips. This is because the HP bonus from the BM Trinket gets instantly taken away once it ends. With this sudden drop in HP, Marrow pulls the trigger and pops Combustion. This drop in HP combined with the Combustion is enough to instantly kill the Red Paladin. Marrow had some clutch timing and caught the enemy team off guard. Now if we watch that entire sequence again, we can see just how smart this cooldown timing was. Even though Mystic was at 75% early on, Marrow knew that his HP was going to instantly fall with BM Trinket. Knowing that, he timed his burst perfectly for when BM faded. Timing your damage around BM Trinket is a really smart play and can completely catch enemy teams off guard. We all know how annoying Paladins can be, having a million defensive cooldowns to save themselves and their entire team. They can be really difficult to kill, but with this next trick, you can cheese some wins against any paladin team. This combo involves using mind control on an enemy paladin and then using blessing of protection on them. Once they have blessing of protection, they will get the forbearance debuff, preventing them from using bubble. During this time, they are incredibly vulnerable as they are missing one of their biggest defensive cooldowns. This actually came into play in a recent AWC tournament where a shatter play was able to open up a unique win condition on a paladin with mind control and blessing of protection. Here, we can see the shatter play up against a warrior mage prod paladin team. Prod paladins can be especially difficult to kill considering their additional cooldown called Guardian of the Forgotten Queen. But if you look at the Paladin's cooldowns, you can see their only remaining passive is Divine Shield. With Divine Shield available, the Shatter play still has a major defensive to rotate through. Luckily, this is where Mind Control comes into play. The Paladin gets put in a full fear while the Mage on the Shatter play does some crazy cross CC on the Warrior with Ring of Frost and on the Mage with Polymorph. Using this cross CC, the Shadow Priest is able to cast a Mind Control on the Prot Paladin. With the Paladin MC, the Shatter play is able to apply Blessing of Protection, putting the Prot Paladin on Forbearance and making them unable to bubble. Now without bubble available, the Shatter Play goes in for the kill, popping every CD they have while the Paladin is CC'd and on Forbearance. The Mind Control BOP play was able to win them the game using a win condition that a few teams ever utilize. This next combo involves everyone's favorite or least favorite spec, depending on who you ask. If you haven't heard of it by now, Sub Rogues have a spec known as the One Dance build, which sacrifices a lot of control 
control options to get a massively strong Shadow Dance. The two most important talents in this build are Night Stalker and Dark Shadow. Night Stalker is chosen over Subterfuge in order to get a 50% damage increase out of stealth, and Dark Shadow is chosen to give you a 30% increase to damage during Shadow Dance, in exchange for giving up a second charge of Shadow Dance with the Enveloping Shadows talent. On top of all this, the build is often used with the Dagger in the Dark PvP talent to get a huge increase to Shadow Strike damage. When you combine all of these damage modifiers with Shadowy Duo, you get a crazy powerful combo for quickly taking out an enemy player. Here you can see Method EU on the back foot against skill capped EU. With Divine Shield used from the Paladin and Ice Block Force on the Mage, Method needs to find a way to turn this game around. What skill capped is not ready for, however, is the strength of the One Dance build. Here you can see Z Pi of skill capped being put into a full kidney shot and shadowy duel. Despite being at 100%, Z Pi is in some serious trouble. As you can see, Thesia of Method EU drops a meteor on top of Z Pi. With Z Pi and shadowy duel, only Waz and Z Pi can target each other. Despite this, AoE abilities will still go through the Shadowy Duel. The Meteor that is about to land will hit Zipai, even though Thesia can't even target Zipai through Shadowy Duel. We can also see on Waz's cooldowns that he also committed Vanish. But why would he do this if Zipai is still in a kidney shot? Well, it's because of the Night Stalker talent we discussed earlier. With this Vanish, Waz is able to use an Eviscerate from Stealth that is 50% stronger, and due to the mark of the Master Assassin Legendary, this is a guaranteed crit. The Eviscerate crit combined with the damage from Meteor are enough to kill Zipai with Shadowy Duo still active, Method EU were able to score a clever kill against Skillcapped. Combining the One Dance build with Shadowy Duel is a really strong win condition and can easily take down most classes in the game. And if you want to learn more mind games to outplay your opponents, make sure to check out skillcapped.com wow. There, you will find a massive collection of instructional videos created by some of the best players in the world. Our videos cover everything you know to instantly boost your rating in Arena. We offer course guides and matchup tutorials to ensure that you always have the upper hand hand over your opponents. If you're wanting to increase your rating or if you just want to learn more about your class in PvP, head on over to skillcaps.com slash wow and sign up today. Members will get instant access to all of our videos as well as access to our premium discord where you can get support from some of the best players in the world. If you want to take your gameplay to the next level, check out skillcaps.com slash wow today. Next, we have a really advanced play that almost no Demon Hunters are utilizing. You already know by now that almost every Demon Hunter is playing Night Fae, giving them access to the ability called the Hunt. We've all probably died to this ability this expansion, and because it's so iconic to the Demon Hunter class, many players will preemptively use defensive CDs once they see it cast. To get around this, it is possible to fake cast the Hunt as a Demon Hunter and bait out enemy CDs without actually using your damage. This allows you to get a full damage Hunt cast without worrying about enemy defensives. Here, you can see a Demon Hunter playing against TSG. The enemy paladin is under a lot of pressure, and with divine protection about to fade, it's at risk to dying to the hunt. The demon hunter fake casts the hunt once, but doesn't get any CDs. Moments later, with the enemy team in an AoE stun, the DH goes for another hunt juke. This time, the fake cast pays off, with the enemy paladin using bubble and with the enemy DK using anti-magic zone. With the hunt still available, the demon hunter is now in a really good position to win this game. Early on in Shadowlands, we made a video about the most broken abilities in the game, and if you recall, mind games was was pretty high on our list. This spell continues to be one of the best abilities in the game, and it has some really cool outplay potential against different forms of self-healing in the game. Some of the most important kill windows using mind games are opened up when mind games is used before the target uses a massive self-heal. If timed properly, mind games can counter the healing done by Frenzied Regeneration when it automatically procs due to the well-honed instincts Druid Conduit. Because Frenzied Regen will always proc on Druids at 40%, mind games can act as a quick counter to deal massive damage to the enemy Druid before they remove their frenzied regeneration buff. Another secret win condition of mind games is against fire mages to counter the heal from cauterize. When a fire mage reaches 0 HP, they will instantly heal with cauterize to 35% HP. But if mind games is on the mage when this happens, they will instead die instantly due to the reversal of healing to damage. Here we have a red warrior against an RMP where mind games will play the primary role in scoring a kill. Although we have just forced ice block, the RMP could reverse at any moment with combustion available. Our priest gets interrupted on mass dispel, but pay attention to his buffs. Prior to the ice block, our priest had used Thought Steel on the mage, stealing their polymorph. With our priest now having polymorph, our team has an additional control option, and more importantly, we have taken away an important control option from the enemy team. Without polymorph, our team can be very aggressive. With polymorph stolen, our priest also has another spell school, allowing them to cast polymorph immediately after being interrupted on their holy school. The enemy team goes in for the kill, with both smoke bomb and combustion being committed. Luckily, our melee are able to respond with defensive CD rotation. The red paladin uses blessing of sanctuary to break the warrior out of stuns, allowing them to use die by the sword 
short and intimidating shout, shutting down the kill. Our priest goes for a flash heal, baiting an interrupt from the mage. With Thought Steel still active, this allows our priest to cast another polymorph on the enemy healer. Now with interrupts down and the priest stuck in another polymorph, our priest is able to cast mind games on the mage right before cauterized procs. The cauterized heal gets reversed, instantly killing the mage. With some clever Thought Steel usage, our priest was able to keep momentum for his team and end the game with control and damage onto the enemy mage. And finally, as the last secret win condition for Arena, we need to look at the power of knockback effects. The two most popular and important knockback effects to be aware of are Thunderstorm from Elemental Shamans and Explosive Trap from Hunters. On maps with a Z-axis like Blade's Edge or Dalaran Sewers, knockbacks can play a huge role in opening up kill windows by separating enemy players from their healer. Many players use these abilities defensively, either to stop CC or to knock enemy players away while they are getting trained. But few players realize its offensive potential. If used properly, it can create a huge distance between enemy players, causing opponents to be out of range of their healer and in a really vulnerable position. Here we have a 2v2 match on the Laren Sewers, a map with a Z axis. With this additional axis in play, it is possible to knock the enemy priest far away from their monk. Here, we can see the kill sequence starting with a silence on the priest. While silenced, the priest will be unable to use Shadow Word's death to avoid getting trapped. With a full trap on the priest and CDs used by the hunter, the monk is under enormous pressure, causing the priest to quickly trinket. But with near-perfect reaction, the hunter instantly stuns the priest on their trinket. With the priest stunned, the hunter uses an explosive trap launching the priest back. The hunter uses disengage to follow the priest mid-air, and when they both hit the ground, the hunter uses a steel trap to keep the priest rooted all the way across the map from their monk. With the priest stuck across the map and the monk under a lot of pressure, Touch of Karma is forced, and more importantly, the Hunter Shadow Priest team has exhausted almost every defensive cooldown from the enemy team, coming directly from a skilled knockback from the Hunter. And there you have it, now you know some of the most broken win conditions in the game. And as promised, this wasn't just a Red Paladin Divine Toll montage. Arena is sometimes about being creative and going against the typical metagame. Not many players are ready for these combos in Arena, so you could easily catch your opponents off guard. See if you can incorporate some of these things into your own gameplay. What other hidden win conditions do you see in Arena? Let us know in the comments below what crazy combos you have seen this season in Shadowlands. If you liked this video, make sure to give us a like. And as always, make sure to subscribe with Ono notifications turned on to never miss a future upload. See you soon!